this video, I'm going to walk you through how to interpret correlation um, tables that you might see in journal articles. So here's an example of a pretty basic one to where you'll notice down, down here on this side, we've got the six variables. And then um, along here, those variables exist as well. So that is um, for one means up here, working memory. Two right here is executive function and so forth. So you'll see right here, there's, there's dashes, and that's because this is the correlation of working memory with itself. So that would always be a perfect correlation, 1.0. And so they just put a dash there because that's meaningless for us. But this next one for, for working memory, as we go down, is the correlation with working memory and executive function. And that correlation is 0.96. If you remember from, uh, your, uh, from your textbook, that would be an outrageously high correlation between those two variables. And then working memory with processing speed and so forth. Okay, so you've got your correlations. That's how it is that you're looking at each of these correlations here. This would be executive function with processing speed, and that correlation is 0.78. You'll notice some negative correlations down here with, with age. So um, executive function with age, you'll notice that as age goes up, executive function goes down. Those prefront, that prefrontal cortex starts uh, shrinking a little bit. Um, and it's not not quite as good. You'll see this the same thing for for age uh, for age and working memory too. That we have a negative correlation between those two. Processing speed, a high negative correlation as well, of of negative point eight eight two. So this is a basic one of how it is that you you would look at and find the correlations between variables. One of the things that doesn't exist in this particular table is to tell you are the results statistically significant or not. And we'd, we would normally expect that out of the table. Um, let's go to, to this next one. We'll give an example. This is far more complex one. And what's important about this one, these tables is whenever they have a note below the table, make sure you read through that note um, because that's what tells you a lot of information about, about the variables. So you'll notice here, they have two sets of, of participants and they're looking at them separately, African-American participants and European-American participants. And so the African-American um, uh, pr participants are presented above the diagonal. So these are the correlations for the African-American participant. And these are the correlations for the European-American participants. Then you'll notice on this one as well, they give us means and standard deviations. And so this is also telling us the means and standard deviations for African-American students are presented in the vertical columns. Um, so we have here and, and then means and standard deviations for European-Americans are presented in the horizontal rows here. Okay, so we have that information there. And then in terms of interpreting it for, let's say, the European-American participants, we see the correlation between the, the BSS, and it tells you down here what that is, the Beck suicide scale, and the correlation with the Beck depression inventory is 0.54. And here's the piece that I wanted to be able to show you off of this, is that you'll notice here it has a little asterisk. Down here, that tells you what that asterisk means in terms of the significance level. So that means that statistically, excuse me, statistically significant at P less than, than 0 0.01. Uh, so, and then up here, we have it for African-American participants. So you'll notice we have, we have two, uh, it's this, the important piece that I want you to get in this one, they're give, giving you a lot of information in one table. And so up here, the African-American um, correlation uh, with, uh, you'll notice that's number two, BDI, with um, the Beck suicide scale. And that correlation you'll see is exactly the same as it was for the European-American participants, 0.54, and that is statistically significant as well. You'll see for some of the other ones, the, the correlations are, are a little different, um, particularly for variable four here, the multi-group ethnic identity measure. Um, you'll notice there's, there's some stronger negative correlations here for African-American participants as compared to, to European-American participants. And then here's just one more example. Um, this would be looking at Pearson correlations with, uh, you see we've got 
uh, IQ scores, depression scores, anxiety scores. You'll notice the table cuts off here. So we're just going to be looking at these three variables um, here. And so the IQ scores with depression scores, really that there's no significant correlation there. But with anxiety scores, there's a significant positive correlation. That means people with higher IQ scores tend to have um, higher anxiety scores as well. Two asterisks here. We look down here. Two asterisks means um, uh, it's statistically significant in a 0.01 uh, level. And then you'll notice here um, for this one, um, they're giving you the exact same correlations as what you see down here. So it's a mirror image. Um, and so what's really important is to make sure that you're looking at all the notes and everything else that, that exists within the table um, to, to give you a, a sense of things. So th again, this is just the same correlation as what we had here. Um, so it's really giving you redundant information in this particular um, correlation table. Okay, so I hope that this video helps you with the, the homework assignment that you have uh, when you have to interpret a correlation matrix.